What's going on everybody? My name is Justin Gaming. Welcome back to the next part in our pre-E3 coverage. Today we're joined by the members from Gaming at its core. We've got Mule Kick Media. Hey. Online ZHD. Hello. And Blue Danger. Yo. So in today's video for the pre-E3 coverage, we're going to be talking about the Ubisoft games because last week out of the blue, Ubisoft decided to announce uh, three new games that they have coming up for their future. Um, that are all going to be released within the next the next fiscal year, and they also announced the release date for South Park: The Fractured, the Fractured Butthole. Um, so the South Park is coming out on October seventeenth because it was delayed from last year. And yeah, as I said, all these other games: Far Cry Five, The Crew Two, and the new Assassin's Creed Origins. Those games are all coming out within the next the next fiscal year, which is before March two thousand eighteen. So, guys, what are your thoughts on this? It's fucking awesome. It's gonna be awesome. I am. I have not played Stick of Truth, but I've seen some footage of it. So good. It. Yeah, I know. I've heard it's like one of the like IPs that's taken from like a TV show or any like. It was one of the. It was one of the best. Like, um, yeah. IPs of last generation. It was so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How yeah. they keep coming up for in- in- think- inspiration for that game and that show? I don't think I'm gonna be buying um, the fractured butthole like right away because it's gonna be coming out in full time. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. maybe like it'll be like a Christmas yeah, or something point. that I end up picking up during yeah. the Yeah, I think that's that's the only thing I worry about it is that you know with the fact that it's coming out in the October time, you know where yeah. it's usually flooded with a lot of games. Whereas I think the Stick of Truth, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't that come out in like February or March? Of yeah, it came out in spring. Yeah. In fact, like um, when it before the game got delayed, it was coming out. I think it had like a January release date. No, it had originally a December release date, which I feel like would have been better. But then it got pushed back to like springtime, and it got pushed back now to October. Mm-hmm. Mm. I still hope the game will sell well. But yeah, yeah that's I, mean, what I, I guess want. it has. Yeah, it's it's so good, an amazing uh, I definitely think it needs to sell well. I think it needs to sell well. Like, stick it to it's one of those like it's a Mario Galaxy one and two. You know, it's like just. Give us the same game, but just more of it, and it'll be fucking amazing. Stick of Truth was one of like the best RPGs last generation, and it really. It I really think they said they're improving game. the combat, so. That's yeah. Great. Yeah. Looks I great. like the fact how they're trying to make it the same, but at the same time they're kind of changing how you put like uh, the main theme of the game. Because whereas in the first one it was very much like an RPG, like slash you know wizardy Medieval. elements. With this one, it's going to be like more about you know superheroes. I think from what the yeah, yeah. what the creators of South Park had said, it was going to be like based around like Civil War one to like superhero. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, a parody yeah, of yeah, superhero yeah. film. So I'm interested to see what they do with that. It'd be awesome if they just if the game's just constantly different tackling like different types of genres that are popular in media. So I really do enjoy it. I mean, I know it's going to be funny as hell. I mean, the gameplay demo. I remember back at E3 last year had me in tears from how funny it was. It was just it, yeah. it, it was just yeah. such a breath of fresh air. Oh, yeah. It was more fun. To just see a that game that genuinely made me laugh as much as, you know, Stick of Truth did and hopefully what Fractured Butthole will do. But, yeah, it just looks so good. I'm definitely probably going to buy it day one because I just think it's going to be amazing. 100%. Yeah. Looks really, really good. What a shame I have to say that Jaden couldn't join us. He was as busy with work today. Yeah. 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 He's got a lot of work to do, people. He wouldn't care less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, yeah, I just gotta make sure it's clear. Right, yeah. Okay, so what about Far Cry Five? Any thoughts on that game? It's kinda weird how they just, you know, like announced it now. Like out of With nowhere. just tweets yeah. or anything, yeah. yeah. Like before E three. I thought they would announce that E three, but yeah, they just randomly. Was it like a to... was it like a like a conference call or something? Or I'm not sure. Or no, what? Like an out the blue announcement. No, they just Yeah. They... Out the blue, yeah. They just announced That's it. weird. Same? That's that is weird. Because that's like a that's one of Ubisoft's like bigger bigger franchises, so it's just announced it out the blue before yeah. the big E3 event. Maybe it's just because it was getting leaked and stuff. They had to figure they had yeah. to announce it or something. I, I mean, the thing, the thing is, it got leaked, be... into it? Yeah. Well, 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 we don't know anything about the game, so what it could be like further in development. It'll come out early next year, and then they'll just show gameplay at this E3. So they've got the announcements out the way. Um, yeah. But it still seems weird to announce. It wouldn't have like as much of an impact if you know what I mean, like to get yeah, people exactly. excited. It, to have so yes. many of their big IPs just get announced before the conference it seems really, really weird. But maybe they're just getting it out of the way so they can show gameplay of all these things because they're all further in production than we think. But I don't know. I mean, I'm excited for Far Cry 5. What do you guys think? Because I love Far Cry 2 and 3. I like, adore those games. I'm I love crazy. Far Cry 3. I still need to play Far yeah. Cry 4. I played yeah, all of yeah. them. Play Far I played, I played 4, well. but I couldn't. Last yeah. gen, it was really good. 4 was just a game that felt just like 3, but like worse in every way. Couldn't honestly get through it because it just 
three set such a high bar in terms of characters and setting and just the way the open world felt. Mm-hmm. That four just felt like a regular open world it game. It felt like a three point five a bit. It felt like just more Far Cry, which isn't a bad thing. Yeah. You know, I love Far Cry and it's great a great series, but. Yeah. Yeah, for, Far Cry 4 weren't as good as 3 or 2, but it was still a great game, yeah, so I'm excited yeah. for 5, and Primal think, was just okay. I heard Primal was good, actually, surprisingly, yeah, but it had like, it the same okay. map, right? Didn't have like yeah. the exact same map? I, didn't, like I didn't enjoy Far Cry Primal. I really didn't enjoy really? it. No, I enjoyed it. I played it, I played it at PSX. I, 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 I just really found the it. game way too boring after like the first three hours for me personally. I mean, I, I appreciate them trying to do something with it. But without the typical things that, you know, Far Cry is known for, like, you know, just being a crazy game in terms of, like, the guns and the explosions, without that, it just, it didn't feel as addicting to play as Far Cry 3 or even Far Cry 4 to some extent. I mean, I know I'm not the big, I'm not the biggest fan of 4, but I'll give the game credit. It's still at least fun to play at some parts. With Primal, I just never felt that at all. It was just, it was such a bland game to me. And, like, yeah. the, the, the thing with Far Cry 4 and Far Cry Primal, the main reason those games sucked was because of the fact that they weren't, they just weren't given the same amount of time of their, as an effort as Far Cry 3 or even Far Cry 2, because usually the Far Cry games have, like, a like a three to four year development gap in between them. Like, I think it was, like, four years in between Far Cry 2 and Far Cry 3's release. Whereas with Far Cry 3 and Far Cry 4, it was literally, like, half of that span. It was only, like, two years. And then with Primal, they released it, I think it was, like, a, a year and three months after 4, which was just crazy. It, it, it felt like they were just shipping it out just because of popularity's sake. And I just hope yeah. with this one, they don't try to make it really similar in comparison to 4. Mm. Um, I just wish that they could do something different, but at the same time, just you know, keep, keep, keep the elements that make 3 fun, but don't make it feel like a carbon copy of Far Cry 3. And it's a bit of a weird thing to say, but all I'm asking is make it slightly similar, but just make it different so that it stands on its own. Like, yeah, you get what I mean. I mean, no, I completely agree because the thing that Far Cry Two and Three had a bit of an advantage last gen because they weren't coming out in such a flooded genre. And I've said this many times. There's so many open worlds coming out now that you, if you want yours to stand out, you do have to innovate. Um, and there's so many good open worlds coming out lately, like Horizon, Near, and uh, Zelda and stuff. So for Far Cry Five to stand out, it does have to like sort of retain that typical Far Cry formula. You know, that standard Ubisoft. That you, like it's not so much repetitive and grindy but it's sort of moorish in a way like i always find that with ubisoft games you know they are repetitive but they're quite moorish and just fun and addictive and uh, so it's got, it's got to retain some quality from previous far cry games but at the same time implement some new innovations to make the game stand out as well because four as you said felt like a bit of a carbon copy of three but with like a worse story in a way and it, it just kind of felt like another standard open world game you know what i mean like with with uh, with Far Cry Five now they have to really go out the way to make this game something special if they want to stand out. Um, but I'm really excited. I really am because I, I like Far Cry. And if they can go back to what more the more story heavy for, uh, elements of like three rather than like the more open world co op elements of four, then I think they'll have a big hit on the hands again. Yeah, Far Cry Three is like one of my favorite games of all time on the PS3, especially. Mm. So if they can do anything as good as that and just innovate, I'd yeah. be all up for it. Yeah. So I think Hopefully I'll- it's good. I'm glad that I think it's going to be pushed to, like, early 2018. Mm. But that doesn't reckon it's going to be a good game, but let's just hope. No. Well, the more time, the better, you know? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, how about thoughts on The Crew 2? Have you guys Did you guys play the original game? I never I didn't really like The, the Crew. crew. Played yeah. the I didn't really like it from... When it's because mm. I I prefer I prefer the, like I prefer Project Cars over the crew. Um, yeah. And when I saw, I was so I remember being so excited. I was so excited for the crew, like an open world racing game. And then it came out, and I remember seeing all the videos on IGN about like how you can drive from it takes this long to drive from one end to the other of the map, and it seems huge. And I was like, damn, this is like you know going to break the book the trend in a way of like just standards Gran Turismo esque uh, racing games. And then it came out, and I was kind of like, eh, eh, you know, it's good, but eh. It's it's just it's just a racing. I mean, PlayStation Magazine covered it uh, this month, and they said it's like the best rate the or the best racing game this generation. And that's like, I kind of trust their opinions, but the guy who was talking about the game, I do trust his opinion. So I'm excited because of that. But if it is like a carbon copy of just the original crew, I'm gonna be a bit disappointed because again, with like with so much racing competition now, like they've got Grand Turismo Sport coming out, it's obviously comparisons are gonna be made there. Um, the crew two yeah. needs to be. A really good game, and I'm just hoping that um, 
I don't know. I don't know what I'd like to see from it because it's kind of hard with the type of racing game it is. The first game yeah. story was just not that great. They, I mean, it had a good like well, racing opening. Games in general, will try that Need for Speed has been plagued of that yeah. as well. It's never had a great story. Yeah, yeah. I think it needs a good story just to be able to separate itself from things like Need for Speed, for mm. me personally. Because the thing was with the crew. The open world was very was ve look, looked very good, but most of the time you're like, oh damn, I wish I could just get out of my car and you know explore the open world. That was like the biggest issue I had with the game. Like there was so much detail put into the open world, but I felt like some of that detail could probably have been put in, put elsewhere. Like for example, most like the driving you know missions online, they just felt like the exact same thing to me personally. Just they ch they slightly changed the objective of it. They just felt repetitive. All the online tasks, you know, the, yeah. and races you could do. I think that's something also I would like to see improved in the sequel. Just add a bit more variety to the online missions because they, from what I saw, because I didn't, I don't own the game. I didn't never owned it. I played it at a, at a friend's, and from what I saw of the online modes. They just all seemed the exact same to me, and it was it, mm. it, it definitely seemed like it got it would definitely get repetitive after a while. So I hope the se the, the sequel it does have a lot more variation uh, yeah, in the online modes. I'd like to see some um, no with the way it's like an open world racing game because open world racing games are quite restrictive because of, as you said you wanted to get out the car and like run around and I think then a lot of comparisons would be drawn to GTA. GTA, yeah, um, exactly. yeah, but. I mean, they could make the open world a bit more of an MMO aspect, you know, like you're driving around a beautiful looking open world yeah. and there's object there's different like mission markers all over the map and stuff, but you can ride around and see other people and, you know, go up mountain cliffs and the specific uh, events tied to that terrain. I think that'd be pretty cool, but yeah. yeah I mean, I'm excited. I I'm excited. I hope it turns out good. Yeah. Because Need for Speed Underground 2 was like, Need for Speed Underground 2 was like the last good um, open world racing game. The one game I loved about um, Need for Speed, this wasn't technically open world, but it was The Run, Need for Speed The Run. That was such a mm -hmm. cool game, in my opinion. In 20, that was that 2012? Yeah. 2011, I think. 2011, yeah. Yeah, I played that all the time at Friends. That was so fun. Mm, I remember that. That was good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the last one here is Assassin's Creed Origins. Couldn't, be, couldn't give a shit. Mm. Damn, bro. Really. <laughs> oh, we all know, yeah, that's Blue Stance. No, yeah, I, yeah, you, I, you I, like, about Assassin's Creed. I've been saying this since uh, since Assassin's Creed 3 that I always wanted the series to take a year off. Same with Call of Duty, but COD's obviously never going to do that. Um, and I wanted them to come back with one of three settings, either Japan, Rome, or Egypt, and they've done that. Um, so I'm excited because of that, but I think my biggest issue, and I've said this many times with Assassin's Creed, is its gameplay. So I would like to see just a refinement of the mechanics. Like the mechanics that are there on a core gameplay level aren't that bad. It's just that they have this overwhelming feel of clunk. Uh, so I'd like to see it like smoothened out in a way. I mean, the, the screenshot that we saw of the game looked gorgeous. Yeah. Um, okay. and I, I hope the open world aspects like take inspiration from Black Flag. Yeah, and hopefully the story elements take more inspiration from Assassin's Creed 2 because while I don't think Assassin's Creed 2 had an amazing story, I, th I thought it was the best in the series. Yeah. Um, so I'd mm -hmm. like to see it more similar to that and then open world aspects of Black Flag. But yeah, what are your guys' thoughts? I love no, Assassin's right. Creed yeah, 2. Okay. Yeah, I think me and Justin have like a similar opinion on Assassin's Creed 2. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, yeah that, oh. grade, that game was just at an all-time high before. Well, I wouldn't consider 4 being the all-time high. I know a lot of people prefer that over 2 somehow. Really? I still think you 2. Too. No, I, think no, I, no, I said a lot of... I just said that. One. I think no. I said the majority think that, or like a lot of people think that. But what, I still think better. Two, no four. Really? No, Are you sure? Four, I think two is still seen as better. Yeah, it was, no. I've it was seen a lot of people. Four, I've seen a lot of people in the comments four? like saying that like, they want it to be exactly like four, just like Black Flag, and they want it to almost be like an exact replica. I don't want Origins to take it like you know, just take what was hot recently. You know, with four, I want them to do some innovating well, stuff. I don't want them to do the exact same. It's weird. You've got yeah. Assassin's Creed Rogue, which is literally Assassin's Creed Four with a different exactly. setting and character. I still but, like, think they should just go back to two. It was just a lot more simpler back then. They had a, like such a good concept. It wasn't as you know as boring to play. It wasn't as repetitive. It felt like out of place and like what you're doing at all times. You know, back in the traditional day before like open world, it's got all about content. Yeah, I just really hope it just goes back to, like, how 2 was. I would say even a little bit like 3, but I, I feel like 3 was kind of, like, the starting point where it kind of, like, slew off. I didn't like 3. I, didn't like I three. liked 3 because I like the multi-protagonist, and I kind of like the, product, the protagonist in those games quite a bit. Um, and just, like, the setting was really, really you cool. You mean, like, when it changed from Hatham to Connor? Yeah, I really like the setting in the game oh, and wow. the characters. But the one thing I didn't like about Assassin's Creed 3 was, like, the like the controls and just, I feel like, the but content in that open world just turned really into, like, that whole how it is today. 
they kind of started from wasn't, there and with a couple of DLC and, and everything. Just like the same as four. As four, four was a refinement of threes. Yeah, but four. Sure I didn't. I don't. I don't like four based on its after, after revelations. They like change up the whole gameplay scheme. But blue, I was actually wondering. You know how you said you didn't like the. You know, like the whole gameplay in the series. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just wondering. Do you mean like like as a whole? Do you think it like improved at any time in the series, or you just um, didn't like? Well, it? actually, yeah, I do. To be honest, I mean, I'm I'm harsh on Assassin's Creed. I'll admit that, but. The thing is, I always get this feeling of clunk, but I think as the games have went on, the gameplay's got significantly better. Now, what Brandon said about four being loved and two, I would, I am fifty fifty on that. I don't necessarily see that because uh, it, IMO, I think it is better than two, but the majority think two not only because of nostalgia, but because at that time it, that was only the second Assassin's Creed game, and Black Flag was after like how many more? Like three, four. So at there this point in time, we've had so many Assassin's Creed games that it's making it harder and harder for each one to stand out. Uh, and that's why I kind of didn't get into Syndicate because at that point I was like, no, I was just, I was kind of over the series. So I'm hoping Origins can bring that back of like the excellent and just combine the best elements of the series and obviously refine the gameplay. My issue with the gameplay is that it's not so much restrictive, but it's just kind of like, un it's not so much, un I, I, I can't really pin it down. I, I, see it as more unresponsive like for yeah. a parkour game and Assassin's Creed is essentially a heavy emphasis on parkour the controls mean, need to be fluid it's like the moment to moment gameplay needs to be fluid and when you're running up buildings it's kind of like you're just flicking the analog stick up repeatedly and trying yeah. to get them to move and it just does yeah. it just doesn't feel nice um, and yeah. so that's what I'd love to see I, I, I think the stealth mechanics are great yeah, I think Let's the stealth mechanics are great, but I think the combat mechanics are just utter oh, garbage. Let's make this clear, though. I didn't say I like Assassin's Creed Four over Two. I said that's like a lot, of, like the majority. When I see the reception from Origins, they want it to be oh, just yeah. like Four, and yeah. it seems like everybody thinks like you know Four is like the golden child of the franchise, which I think it was like you know the best one as of recently. Mm -hmm. But obviously, I still love Two the most. I mean, that's the game that. I've been saying for like a lot while in like the chat and everything. I love to so much the settings, oh. the characters, you know, with the glider, man. So many cool yeah. memories of that game. Still, yeah, that moment I love was that awesome. Game. Yeah. When I played that part. Assassin's Creed 2 was like yeah. one of the best games on the PS3 in early generation with like 2009. Well, I say best games, but I mean like, you know, from like a, at least a third party standpoint and just open world. Because mm. there wasn't too many open world games back then as it is now. No. I think Ubisoft benefited so much last generation of the lack of open world games. And there wasn't a lack because there was obviously Red Dead, Skyrim and all that. But yeah. I think now it's there's quite, way, way more than ever. There's so, so much many open world, world games. games. Like, it's yeah. going to be hard for them to stand out. Like Watch Dogs 2. Watch Dogs 2 is great. And it just flew completely yeah. under the radar. Yeah. Because yeah. one of the disappointments of 1 and 2, because there's just so many coming out now. Well, that's because 1 was overhyped like crazy. Like it was I, st I, still liked, I still liked Watch Dogs 1. Like, yeah. I don't think it was a bad game. It was just that it was, you know, overhyped when because people were like saying it's gonna be like the next big open world. That's the, the thing. I didn't game. get. I didn't get overhyped with the game because I just kept my expectations reasonable. I still found fun. Found fun in that game. Yeah, yeah. it's really fun. Yeah, and then you. Saw Although Watch Dogs, Dogs 2, 2 was like an opposite. Like Watch Dogs 2 is so good. That's like one of the most underrated games because like how many people slipped on that game because of one. Yeah. Rightfully so. I mean, they they screwed people over with one. <clears throat> but yeah. yeah. Two definitely did a re good direction. I just hope that you know Ubisoft. I think like the developers that have been talking about it, like on Reddit for AMAs, they've been saying how they took a break and they want to come back with the AC really strong. It's a good so, decision. Yeah. It's a good decision. I'm so glad they've won. Yeah. Out. Yeah. Same. I mean, they still yeah, technically really released know. an AC game last year with the uh, collection, but I uh, yeah, it's funny. Yeah. But yeah, I don't yeah. I'm not too that. bothered about like the new Assassin's Creed Unity because I mean Assassin's Creed isn't isn't a franchise that I'm massively you know excited for. Not a series that I hold, you know, dear to my heart. I haven't even played the majority of the games. I don't think I, I don't remember playing Assassin's Creed One. I've played two, played a, a bit of Brotherhood, and I don't, I don't think I've touched Revelations. I didn't play three. I've played a bit of four and a bit of Unity. Not touched Syndicate. So Empire, I'm, I don't know. I'm interested with the fact that they've taken a break from it. Uh, I think that's definitely a good thing. Um, yeah. especially from what people have been telling me, obviously with the, the games getting, you know, a bit, a bit repetitive and boring over time. Um, I hope it does the game good, but this is Ubisoft we're talking about. You know, we can set our expectations for as high as we want for a game because it looks good and then we just end up getting really disappointed by it. But I, ju I just hope that they've learned the mistakes that they made, you know, in the past, especially Unity. I mean, I still have dreaded memories of playing that game. I mean, I even played the PC version, and Jesus Christ, that was an experience I'll never forget for the wrong reasons. 
But it, it, I just hope that they can just make the game feel as, you know, uh, oh, I'll probably want to say as re- re- revolutionary as Assassin's Creed 2. Um, because, you know, people tell me that that game was like the game that changed it everything for Assassin's Creed Unity. So if it can be oh, yeah. along the veins of that, then I'll be excited for it. Yeah. yeah. So what do you expect to see in terms of Assassin's Creed E3? Like a gameplay demo, most likely? Yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. opposite. Well, if it's yeah. going to come out this year, they've got to show a gameplay demo. Yeah. It's, it's too close not to. Do you think they're going to partner up with Sony or Microsoft? Because right now I'm lingering towards that. I think Microsoft. Sony. I think Microsoft. Yeah. I'd say Microsoft, yeah. Sony's already got in the bed with so many. Sony's, Microsoft. right, yeah. Sony's in the bed with so many, like, different... I think it'll be, like, already. a similar situation with, like, Unity, how they partnered with Xbox for Unity. Mm. Something like that. Yeah. Maybe we'll, we'll see something at the Xbox. Xbox, yeah. Maybe we'll see, like, a Scorpio thing with Xbox. Mm. And, mm. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so one final thing I want to quickly say. Um, so, yeah, now that we know, basically, like, all these big games that Ubisoft has planned, do you think we're still going to see any, like, surprises at E3? Oh, for sure. They always do, like, a new IP at the very end of their show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think they're way more idea. of like a closed book than EA has been. I feel like I know what I'm gonna expect from EA, just Star Wars yeah. crap. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> yeah, yeah they love a new IP, but I'm skeptical of Ubisoft new IPs nowadays because For Honor was just complete. I don't like that game whatsoever. Um, so I'm gonna be skeptical. I'm gonna. It's gonna be interesting to see if they do a new IP, what it'll be, because I'd like to see them do a linear story game. Like one, there's not that many on this, on this, uh, or we have not that many this generation. Um, and two, most of Ubisoft's games nowadays are just complete open world. You know, it's like Assassin's Creed. They're not gonna do a linear Far Cry, but if they do another open world, it'll just be like. They said in a recent like conference call that they're focusing on live service games like like give like you know yeah. content to players and with their, their biggest franchises like Ghost Recon outselling Horizon and Zelda, there's yeah. no way they're gonna get away from that on a financial point. Maybe they'll support like little indie games like what what they did with Child of Light and stuff, but I feel like that's like the most we'll get out of story. I mean, there still can be stories in open world, so that's not something that's like new, just not gonna be as prevalent or as focused on. Mm-hmm. Mm. But I just hope that I just the main thing I want is like a good standalone solo single player experience from Egypt or Origins, whatever you want to call it. That, that game has so many names, obviously. Egypt Empire Origins, like geez, I just want yeah, a final name. Part, I've never wanted a game more to be announced, like just for clarification, than now with the say with Assassin's Creed. Holy crap! Mm. Yeah, it'll be interesting though. Yeah. Okay. Yep, well, those were our thoughts on the upcoming Ubisoft lineup. So, of course, make sure to let us know down below in the comments what your thoughts are. If you're looking forward to any of these games and if you're looking forward to the Ubisoft press conference at E3. And yeah, with that, we'll see you guys in the next part of our pre-E3 coverage. Thanks a lot for watching. See ya. See ya. All right, cool. Thank you (laughs) so much for watching.